In these questions, we're now analyzing diagrams for polyatomic ions. So these are covalently bonded molecules that have a charge. They've either gained or lost electrons. So our first step is to think about our neutral molecule. So this question is about CO3, so one carbon and three oxygens. And we're trying to figure out how many valence electrons we would have in that neutral molecule. So let's go to our periodic table and we'll find carbon and oxygen. Here's carbon and here's oxygen. So we can see carbon is in group 14, oxygen is in group 16. So according to our shortcut, carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons. So we've got carbon with four valence electrons and we've got oxygen with six valence electrons and we have our CO3 molecule that has one carbon and three oxygens. So that's one set of four valence electrons and three sets of six valence electrons, which gives us a total of 22 valence electrons. So let's fill that in and check we got that correct. Okay. So we figured out how many valence electrons would be in a neutral CO3 molecule. However, we don't have a neutral molecule. In this question, we have a polyatomic ion. So you can see we have a CO3 2 minus polyatomic ion. So we need to think about that charge and what it means. So a negative charge that means that we've gained electrons since electrons are negatively charged themselves. If we have a negative charge, we've gained electrons. A positive charge, on the other hand, that means we've lost electrons. Since electrons are negatively charged, if we lose them, we become more positively charged. In this question, we have a charge of two minus. So it's a negative charge, meaning we've gained electrons. And it's a charge of two minus, meaning we've gained two electrons. So we had 22 electrons to start with in our neutral molecule. We became a two minus ion, which added two more electrons. That gives us a total of 24 valence electrons in our polyatomic ion. So we can check that now. Okay, so now we've figured out the valence electrons in our polyatomic ion. The rest of the question works exactly the same as previous questions, where we just go ahead and analyze our molecule. The only difference is that this is a charged molecule. Okay, so we know it's got to have 24 valence electrons, so we can add that in our table. Let's go ahead and count the electrons that we have on our diagram to make sure that it matches up. So we've got one pair here for a running total of two electrons, another pair here, that adds two for a running total of four electrons. We have a double bond here. That provides four electrons, so that gives us a running total of eight. We have a single bond here. That provides two electrons for a running total of 10. A lone pair here provides two electrons, a running total of 12. Another lone pair, that's a running total of 14. Another lone pair, that's a running total of 16. We have a single bond here. That provides two electrons for a running total of 18. Then we've got a lone pair here, provides two electrons, a running total of 20. Another lone pair provides two more electrons, a running total of 22. And one last lone pair provides two more electrons for a running total of 24. So we've just counted, we have 24 valence electrons on our diagram, which is the same as the number of valence electrons required. So that part of our diagram is looking good. Our next step is to look at each of our atoms and check if they are obeying the octet rule. So let's start with carbon. This carbon atom has a double bond here that provides four electrons, a single bond here that provides two more electrons, and a single bond here that provides two more electrons. So that's a total of eight electrons for our carbon shown on our diagram. And according to the octet rule, carbon needs eight electrons in its valence shell. So that's looking good. 
Next, let's check our oxygens. So we'll look at this oxygen atom here. This is oxygen atom labeled one on the diagram. So here we have one, two, three lone pairs for a total of six electrons and one covalent bond, which adds two more for a total of eight electrons. So we have eight electrons on oxygen atom one and oxygen needs eight electrons according to the octet rule in its valence shell. So that's looking good. Now oxygen atom two, labeled number two on the diagram. Here we have two lone pairs of electrons for a total of four electrons there. And we have this double bond which also provides four electrons. So that's a total of eight electrons on that oxygen atom. So we have eight. And again, we require eight according to the octet rule. So that looks good. Our final atom to check is this one labeled number three oxygen atom on the diagram. We've got three lone pairs for a total of six electrons, plus we have this covalent bond which provides two more, that's a total of eight electrons. So we have eight valence electrons shown on the diagram, and according to the octet rule, we require eight electrons in our valence shell. So all of our things are checked off here. That means that every single atom obeys the octet rule and we have the total number of electrons, which matches up with the number that would be provided in a CO3 2 molecule. So this diagram is correct.